Hey everybody, and welcome to the first episode of Monster Train. Uh, this is actually my second attempt at recording because the first one is thwarted by a tutorial. This is a fresh save, new computer. This game is a card-based tower defense, I guess you'd call it. Sort of like Slay the Spire, if Slay the, Fire, if Slay the Spire was a... Tower defense. You put down dudes, and those dudes fight the dudes who enter your train. It's actually a lot of fun. I played it a lot back uh, when it came out. I saw it on my list, and I thought I would play it again. Uh, for the first run, I'm just going to do the classic one that everyone starts with, which is Hellhorn Dewoken. On Covenant Rank 2, the Covenant stuff is just like the Ascension Mode and Slay Spire. For each rank, there's more random difficulties. Alright, find Seraph the Chased. Uh, at Ascension 1, you get random starting cards. And I think we got pretty good ones, to be honest. Big fan of these cards. Um... I don't want to railroad myself into a imp build, so I'm going to get the Scorched Steel. Armor is like temp HP in D&D. It gets subtracted before you take HP damage on your Deuterinos. I'm going to take the Wrathful. The Multi-Strike Hornbreaker Prince is pretty good with buffs, and I do have a Woken, so that does buff good. But having scaling on him is really good as well. And this will allow him to kind of tank and do a bunch of damage. Each time you do a round, except for the super bosses, you get trials. And the trials are like optional difficulty add-ons. And I'll be honest, I pretty much just always flick them on unless my run is turbo doomed. Maybe when, when we get to super high ascension mode, uh, I might rethink that. But for now, it's like no contest. I, I might as well read their lore as well. Discipled Inquisitor, a high-ranking officer within the combative ranks of the disciples, the humans that had been admitted into heaven, banded together under the Inquisitor to join Seraph's cause when they broke our rail. So now, get into the combat mode. I'll be, I'll be honest, uh, armor, 10 armor is pretty, pretty huge, actually. I think I'm gonna put this guy up here. These enemies start with rage, which gives them 2 damage per stack. So I figured it might as well. Yeah, I'm just gonna... Damage him, I guess. So, each wave that you are not on a boss, you get a little loot hoarder, dude. Uh, but I just killed it with the AoE. Another good, good reason to have Awoken is that Glimmer card. It's a very nice AoE. One of the best AoEs in the game, in my opinion. I'm not going to spawn any units because they'd instantly just die to the clergyman. Um, crap, those guys can get through. Oh well, it is what it is. Take one pyre damage. No, we're going to take two. Luckily, the fire does AoE damage, so not really losing that much HP. <laughs> you know what? I think I'm just going to send the boss. Yep, there we go. We've defeated him. It's very nice. Oh, counted as a two-turn boss rush, even though he was on the top floor because I sent him. That's interesting. It's not connected to the actual lanes. 
Um, I've already got AoE. I've already got Hornbreak. I could get Hidden Passage to get a non crappy ascend. Um, and low. Uh, I'll get it. In low ascension levels, you don't really need to go absolutely nuts, though. I think I'm going to get Sharpen as well. And my favorite card, the Thorned Hollow. It's so friggin' good. We are truly blessed to get it immediately. The red slash gold merchants upgrades your units, and the purple one upgrades your spells. I think I'm gonna upgrade my units. It means getting the Hellhorns banner, which I think the Hellhorn card uh, actual dudes are a little bit worse. This is nice. Uh, to explain the shops, uh, your spells and duders have like two rune slots, and you can buy runes to fill those slots here. Oh man. I could double down and give that guy another multi strike. I think I will. It's a hundred gold, which is absolute ton. I'm not gonna give him plus ten damage because I wanna give him the plus five plus ten card rune. Uh there's the stone, it gives ten HP, five damage. And I think that would be better because some enemies have spikes. And there's also, you know, this trial. Which I'm going to take against my better judgment. It'll be easy, though. Our deck is unstoppable. I'll put the Thorn Hollow on the bottom floor. In general, you want to stop the these types of dudes from getting resolve triggers uh, which basically after the round they'll do something got we were fortunate again that we could get the loot order I'm putting the triple tank guy up here so that he doesn't take that much damage from spikes Yep, there we go. I need more heals in our deck, or to get rid of the torches at least, because I got no heals on the Thorn Hollow. Oh, with just a couple regens, this guy is dead. So, the reason the Thorn Hollow is my favorite unit is because each time you heal it, it gains plus two spikes, and it also starts with a huge amount of extra max HP that's not filled up. So you get a lot of value out of the healing. Kinda tempted to get the five armor card. I feel like... Uh, there's no need. I've Awoken, um, which has a bunch of heals, and that's pretty much the same as armor. Steel Enhancer, though, I think could be worth. Restoration Detonation is also extremely good. Well, it's much better than Steel Enhancer, but I don't really have many buff cards. I, I think I'll get the Detonation. It's just too high value. You can do like 50 damage, which scales very well into the late game. I don't really have any cards that are maxed out. So I don't necessarily want to duplicate any yet. And I don't need the pyro means. So I'm going to go to the Merchant of Steel. I think this is my favorite Hellhorned card. Though this is also an extremely good one. Slay, apply Rage 3 to friendly units. You know what? I think I'm going to go for the Branded Warrior. I've got plenty of tanks so far. 
And he got quick right off the bat, which is what I wanted. Um, I could give him a strength stone. I think I'm going to give the Branded Warrior a large stone, though. So I'm going to wait on that. I don't really want to re-roll, because if there is a large stone, I wouldn't be able to afford it. I could remove a uh, torch. I think I'll do that. I'm gonna end up removing these cards anyways. So the little frost cavern thing is just a random event. Oh. As you pass a train graveyard, you notice several of your fallen allies. Within the beasts of gnarled steel lie now extinguished pyre shards. Even further inside the rubble, you can make out some pr last protracted treasures. Perhaps if you were to relight the pyre shards using some of your own, the trains would reveal their value. So you can get three options. Small shard gives a heart stone, which is pretty good. Medium shard gets blood for blood, which is okay, but... Um, you need, like, the relic that stuns dudes to enter your pyre chamber to really make the most use out of it. And I'm killing dudes before they get to the chamber. And then the Petrified Heart gives friendly units 10 max HP, but they can't be healed. And obviously that, that does not work with our current deck. I'm going to get the Small Shard, because when you get a stone from an event, it ignores the cap on your dude. So, my Thorn Hollow dude has just ascended to Godhood. The 90 HP. The Pyre Shard flickers to life. The treasure within now revealed as the Pyre removes its final defense. Yet as you leave, the Pyre Shard go out once more. This time for good, you are all that's left. Right, we're fighting Talos. See, the Architect of the Exodus attacks blindly and gains more protection with each unit she slays, so take her out quickly. Enemy units enter with Rage 2. Talos attacks every turn and gains armor on slay. So, don't have squishy dudes up front. Um little reticent to have the Hornbreaker Duder up front, but I, I think it will. I could get a Thorn Hollow potentially. I'm gonna just have this dude stand on his own. Hope that Talos doesn't kill him. Oh. Elhorn do not like winged. Gamble paid off. We got the Thorned Hollow. He's gonna start healing so much that he can just take all the damage. Should be good. His restoration detonation. Just instantly killed a dude. Um, this guy is quick, which means he goes before the enemy, and he's got a Slay Trigger, which will give Rage 3. Just six damage to everyone in the lane. Which is real nice. Big fan. Uh, I don't think I'm going to play any more cards this round. Uh, I'm going to play Tiresome Climb to Talos. Save my Horned Warrior. Though his, his lifespan is definitely... His days are numbered, let's just say. In general, you want to be stacking healing on the spikes to as much as possible. And we win. Which was not even close. It's very good. 
Uh, I like Alloy of the Ancients. It's it's a it's a lot of bang for buck. Uh, I do have some cards that I sort of want need to upgrade spell wise, but basically I'm considering you only get so many shops in the game, so each new card you get uh, there's a hidden value calculation with whether or not you want to spend upgrades on them. And if I wanted to really gain max the Alloy of the Ancients, what I would do is I would give it the Remove Consume Stone and then a minus one Energy Stone. I think... I, I, don't, I don't think I need to gain max, it's super hard. I've already got a Branded Warrior. Might as well just get an Awoken Hollow, because it also combos with the Triple Strike Duder. Um, I'm not having any capacity problems, so I'm going to get Herzl's Compound. The Unstable Vortex, I think, is one of the better uh, events you can get. This allows you to remove two cards for free. Which is very useful, to say the least. Rage does not decay on friendly units. I mean, like, Priority's, Priority's Cloak is good, but Collection of Tails is extremely good. An imp officially matures into a demon when their tail falls off and they learn to stand on their own feet, but this evolution only seems to enrage the demon further. I don't like the sight of disembodied tails, but keeping them is necessary. Um, I'll get the Animus Will. It combos with some of our units really well. I think I'm gonna get Wrathful too and try to go for the multi-strike. The other option would have given me on slay gain damage, but I already gain damage when he takes damage. So clipped tormentors. They might be low level recruits of the clipped, but they'll overload you with penance if you don't take them out quickly. They're all gonna have spikes, which is gonna really mess up some of my dudes, but I think it'll be fine. I'm just going to horn break. Uh, these little chain dudes add garbage to your deck that will hurt you if you don't get rid of it. It's very not cool. I'm going to put someone on each level just in case the loot hoarder shows up. So I put Alloy on this dude so he doesn't die instantly from the spikes, and I put the Thorn Hollow on the bottom. I was thinking about putting the Awoken Hollow up top to start juicing the Animus of Will, but um, the Hornbreaker Prince guy was not going to get any kills anyways. This is kind of... his life is on the clock. But now we're in an awkward situation, because the Horn Warrior is on lethal. I think I'll play Glimmer, which will get rid of this guy, but also put this, put him above the death threshold from the spikes. Uh, no. He's still dying. Well, it is what it is. I figured um, he wouldn't be too long in this world. I could move this guy up, but then I would tank a bunch of fire damage. I'll just uh, restore. Oh, he gets spikes three when he's healed. 
I'll just spike up the Thorn Tala. He's the the real MVP that I'm gonna try to focus on. Um nobody's dying except for the animus. I could put a train steward to tank and attack. And horn break him. Now the animus isn't dying at all. No. So Glimmer is technically better, but Restore gives a stack of regen, which is like reverse poison. So I think it'll add one more spike striker, which is why I'm using it. Might as well just throw this guy here. Um. I was going to heal the spike dude, but this is a problem. He's going to go up and he's going to hit the pyre, and then the pyre is going to hit him, and it's going to take spike damage. I think the only thing I can do is tiresome climb. So this will take 4 damage when it attacks him, but he's not going to attack it because he is stunned. Eh, not 100% ideal, but... As you can see, defeated this guy. So that's another win under our belts. Oh, pyre wall is really good. Your pyre, your pyre starts each battle with armor 15. As the winged offensive grew more aggressive and building materials grew more scarce, I had to develop some protection with the tools at hand. These walls won't withstand more than a couple blows, but that can still mean the difference between life and death. And most importantly, it's gonna stop the little chip damage of 5 here, 10 there. So that's very good. <laughs> Inferno is an interesting card. Deal 100 piercing damage to friendly and enemy units. So clear out a whole lane. I don't think that synergizes with my build that much. In fact, I'm pretty sure none of this really does. I think I'm just gonna take the gold. Um, these are all really good cards. I'm a big fan of the draw cards. Um, I think I'll take Engraft. Not only because I don't have the gold border on it, but I need only put a minus one energy cost to really super juice it. it synergizes with both my hollows. I'm going to go for the Vortex as well. We've gotten all the torches out of the deck. Now starting on the stewards. Um, I think I'm going to put 25 max HP on the Horn Warrior. Because he keeps dying every freaking round. No, it's not super ideal. I don't really want either of these. I already got quick on... Maybe the Animus. Yeah, I'll put it on the Animus. It's not super great, but... <laughs> no, I'll put Multi-Strike on the Branded Warrior as well. I'll give the Animus... Uh... Yeah, I'll give the Animus plus 10 damage. That way it'll hold its own if it's on its own. The Harpy's Guard. Heavy hitting clipped warriors will protect this harpy at any cost. They will gain more power with each foe slain, so make sure to defeat them before they thin out your defense. So these guys have sweep. <laughs> I'm gonna go for it. I said I would go for all of them. I will. Sweep hits all the dudes. I'm saying dudes a lot. I, I, I'm gonna start saying units. 
Sweep hits your units in the back, which can really fuck them up pretty good. Um, I kind of want to play all of my units, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to tire some climb this guy, save my Hornbreaker Prince a lot of damage, and start buffing him up. You loop through your deck pretty quick in this anyways. This is extremely suboptimal, but I have no attack cards, so I'm going to have to put the Thorn Hollow up top if I want the loot hoarder. I mean, it's got so much gold that it gives, it's it's always worth. One graft him. And graft gives you one energy back. If you if you remove the energy cost, it's literally just gains, which is really very good. Uh I'm gonna have an ally of the ancients on this guy as well. start juicing my big dude. I think the Thorn Hollow is like one of the better boss killers. Put the Woken Hollow down here. Start juicing it as well. Our uh, middle lane has started doing so much damage that they're not even taking any. Because they're both got quick. So that lane's set. It's actually better if we leave this guy alive so he'll go up and then get killed by the Branded Warrior. I'll put this guy here. So he starts with sweep and also life steal. He's actually gonna get through one of the lanes. I think he's gonna die to the next wave though. Yep, it's not even close. He doesn't even survive one round. It's a two turn boss rush. We got jack strips. I think it's one of the better relics. It does two damage to every enemy that moves around, which clears out. There's a lot of like little dudes who do like 10 million damage and have two, three HP. It's a good counter against them. I don't think I'm gonna get any of these. I mean, the rage would be pretty okay. I'll get, I'll get the custodian. plan on getting the yellow thing anyways. Do I have any... No spells. I, I really like duplicating spells most. So it kind of sucks to be missing out on the Hellbent. But the alternative is buying a trinket. Which I mean, I don't know. I don't know what trinket I would even want at this point. I just need my spells good. Do I have cards I need to remove? Yeah, a couple train stewards, some restores, because I want to replace them with the engrafts. It sucks, but I'm not going to have the helmet. Get rid of the train stewards. Thin the deck out. Thin deck is good deck. Let's see what we've got event-wise. Rail spikes from the rings of hell have been driven into a stone near the rail like some sort of monument. At the base lies a hammer carved with ancient runes. You can't make it all out, but what you can talks of the founding of the covenant. Could this be the birthplace of the rail? But with the covenant now broken, these spikes serve no purpose here. Many of them are lodged too deep in the stone to take. But the spikes of the hellhorned, awoken, and stygian guard are loose enough to pry away. Which do you take? So Hellhorn gives Rage and Armor, uh, it's 2x, so it gives an effect based on how much juice you put in. 
I think I'll get the Awoken's real spike. It's pretty good. After quite some effort, you remove the spike from the stone. Its original power is still evident from the glowing runes. With this ancient piece of the covenant now in hand, you go back on your way. Alright, um... I could possibly duplicate it too. I think I will. So now we're facing the second mini-boss, Arcus Darkness Incarnate. Using unknown ancient powers, Arcus summons shards of the divinities to halt your advance. Fell spoke of another sibling only once, saying he was both dark of wing and of mind. Seraphos also alluded to the imprisonment of their forsaken brother, but my memory fails to provide more details on the mysterious Arcus. He's going to summon a looming shard and a dark shard. The shards he summons is random each time. Okay, not too horrible. You just have to be mindful. Uh, this one will make your spells cost more if you cast spells while it's there. I think I'm just going to put these dudes down here. Yeah, you know what? I'll just summon dudes this round. I don't have to worry about the loot hoarder, because it's a boss fight. So, won't be too bad. So this one, uh, if I lose a unit, it will give me garbage in my deck, which, big who cares. Uh, I'll play the Awoken Hollow up top. Oh, that's good. Now it's just spells I gotta worry about. This is the encant one, so I can't play spells on that floor. I'm gonna glimmer. I'm gonna just juice the thorn hollow. I guess I'll weaken this guy. I'll put the guardian over here. One strategy I like to employ is making the guardian a tank by giving it a bunch of heart stones. I might end up doing that. Continue to juice Thorned Hollow. Can no longer play cards on this floor. So I'll just juice this guy even more. I think we've got this boss fight under wraps. I'm just gonna spend the next few turns bouncing around, healing up the duders on the bottom and top floor. Get there and camp triggers. Yep. Very good to go. Arcus should be showing up now. <clears throat> Wait a second. Why is he not dead? I think if I heal this guy twice, he's gonna withstand one more attack. Oh crap, we might lose this one. I think I'm gonna start healing this dude. Because each time he heals, he juices the animus who is benefiting triply from every single bonus because it's got triple attack uh, I don't think we're gonna lose 
He's gonna have like 300 HP. Yep, we win this. That was a little close for comfort. Thought for sure we were just gonna kill him in the first room. I guess that goes to show that we really, really, really need spell upgrades. I could get Cycle of Life. It's a little bit dog shit, but... I mean, 10 HP is good. It just needs a lot of upgrading to be... Not bad. Actually, I know I only have like two shops. So I shouldn't be. I'm gonna get... I kind of want to get Herzl's Compound. Yeah, I don't think I need any more capacity. I'm not running into any issues with it. So I'm only going to get one purple shot before the round's over. Do I have any cards I need to get rid of? Um, Not really. Like, the glimmers are good, the horn breaks are good, the restores I kind of need to proc my hollows. On the other hand, do I have any units that need upgrading? I guess, like, I can upgrade. There's two of them that can be upgraded. I guess I'll go for that. In the, this battle, there's always, like, a big money event, I think. I could be wrong. Let's see. Oh. This is real good. It's a little bit late, though. Oh wait, this is the tome one, not the other one. Um, one horn's tome is kind of dog shit, in my opinion. Flies fragile and multi-strike. Fragile means if it takes damage, it dies. The wildwood tome's okay. The unnamed tome. I feel like this one's pretty good. Silence removes triggered abilities. I think it might apply to the boss as well. None of these are super great. I guess I could like make the hollow quick. Or the horn warrior quick. I think I'll go for the Stygian guard one. Excellent. I promise this will be well worth the read. As a studious mind is a strong mind. Good luck, Hellborn. May the Pyre protect us in our journeys. Hmm, <laughs> large stone. Uh, that would have been good on the Animus Will, but I didn't get the yellow stone, so... Uh, I'm, I'm not gonna make him a tank. I'm just gonna make him like a decent unit so I can slot him in wherever None of these upgrades are great. I think I'm just gonna leave All right, so as I said I was gonna go for multi-strike. I think it's good it's, It synergizes with the other abilities really well Could have just went for the maxed out armor gain, but Let's see. Winged, acquainted with the power of death, they consume the souls of their victims to heal and grow stronger. There's a big old Chad winged dude. The enemies get spell shield too, which is okay. I'm not really doing much spell attacks. My spells are still really garbo. <laughs> I can't really uh, put the Hornbreaker Prince down. He would instantly die. I guess I'm gonna start up here. Oh, got the little dude. Uh, I don't know if silence affects spell shield. I might as well give it a whirl. Nope. I'll put alloy on the ancients on this guy, so. 
Oh, no. Okay, um, I'm gonna ascend... Uh, one of these guys. Yep, there we go. Now none of them are dying. And I guess I will... Put this guy down here. Maybe I shouldn't have. He's taken absolute metric ton of damage. But I figured I'd get the hollows. Yikes, how much damage is this guy doing? 5 plus 8, 12, no, 13 plus 20. Might have just accidentally killed some dudes. If I glimmer... If I glimmer twice... Mm, I also want to get this Thorned Hollow set up. Ooh. Yeah, fuck. Alright. Sometimes you mess up. <laughs> you lose away your best... Well, your C team. No! Oh, no! I... Oh, I should have hornbreak this dude. Okay. Oh, no. I should have read more. My friggin... Plan C is quickly becoming Plan A. My pirates can take a little bit of damage. This sucks. Big, big sucky dicks. Alright, I always remember to graph first. So it pays for itself. Uh, maybe I should have tiresome climbed this guy, but no, no, he take more damage from these dudes. So I've got 33 spikes on him. Boss is gonna. Be all the way down there, so I've got three turns to try to make my dude not suck. Uh, I believe piercing uh, pierces spell shield, which is real nice. So I can save my dude like 10 HP. Or maybe I should actually kill this guy down here. Yeah, I think I will. It'll save me more HP in the long run. I didn't need to pierce the the armored dude because the spire, the the pyre does AOE anyways. Wait, do these forever cost zero? The awoken uh, rail might be better than I thought. Okay, he's got 30 HP remaining. Oh, if I glimmer him, I don't think he's going to get a revenge trigger. Alright. Real question is... This wouldn't even matter if it changed nothing. I'm just going to have to take the however much damage. Very unfortunate, but there's no alternative. I really bungled this wave. This is really, really crap.
I guess I'll get another engraft. I'm gonna have to go for the Merchant of Magic. The Pyre Health would be awesome, but I think the reason the reason things are going so badly is because my spells have just been not upgraded at all. I'm gonna make a super engraft. Uh, there's nothing that I want that would have holdover except maybe engraft. The the bad engraft. Do you know what? There's no reason not to. Why? Consume. Plus 20 magic power when gain consume is pretty good. And little restores. Double stack. That'd be pretty funny to have on Tiresome Climb. I don't think I'm going to have it on any of my stuff. Um, I'll put the minus one energy on the holdover and graft, so it just gives me plus one energy per turn, basically. Then I'll duplicate. I'll duplicate the holdover and graft. What trinkets do I got? Sting gets more magic power, plus armor whenever it's applied. Which would actually work with Scorched Steel to give 9. I might as well get that. Friendly units gain plus 2 damage on Slay. By dazed enemy units when they enter the room before the Pyre Room. This one's really good as well, so I think that'll be what I take. Is there anything I need to purge? I... Uh, could get rid of a restore. I think we have enough card draw. That doesn't really matter though. I think I'll get double stack on the alloy of the ancients. And uh, I will get rid of one restore. Thin the deck very slightly. That way I have the least amount of gold possible when I enter the last fight. This is going to be a little bit close. This counters the spike build a bit, but and also the rage. But still, I think it's not, not too doomsday. Now the real question is, how do I want my floors set up? Kind of like having the Awoken Hollow with the Triple Striker. So I think I'm going to put this dude up here, and I'm going to put the Hornbreaker Prince here. And I'm going to start his scaling. Or maybe I should scale the Hollow. I think upgrading my Hornbreaker Prince is more important. This is why the Light's Gift Relic is good. I don't think he's got any activated abilities. Let's see. I might as well... No, I'll, I'll hold on to the Alloy of the Ancients. I'm just going to damage this dude. So this dude applies the Ember Drain. It's really annoying. Luckily that dude's dying. have my strikey dudes down there. I'm going to hold off on this sp real spike. I think it gives a permanent cost down, so might as well use it on turn where I have like 10 million energy. Which is not this turn.
I think I'll choose the Animus, because the Seraph's debuff will not work on it. I don't want to put this Custodian down, because he's going to apply Ember Drain to it. In fact, I think it might be just worth uh, using Tiresome Climb so it doesn't get the opportunity. I will juice up the Animus Will. That will be my my eggs in my basket plan. Right, those units are dead. He's safe for now. Might as well keep him as safe as possible. Now would be the time to use that rail spike if it's in my hand, which is not. So this is 30 times 3, which is 90, minus 3 is 87, plus 15. I can't send this person. It's gonna apply four attack to the animals. Alright, so I do have a rail spike. Uh, I'm going to use Restoration Detonation, though, before I use the real spike, because it's very good. I'm going to be drawing four cards uh, that have costs associated with them. It's not too bad. I'll send the armored dude, because when you ascend a unit, it goes to the back of the line. He's got no attack, so it doesn't matter if he gets to the pirate. One way for me. I have a feeling I might super duper lose this. I'm gonna keep it the same strategy I've been doing. Yeah, new plan, same as the old plan. Probably should have used the big heal on the spike guy either way, though. Restoration detonation. I'm gonna hidden passage this person as well. So I can maximize the damage on chased. So it's doing 30 damage around. So I'd need to break 90 HP to get enough. So 2 plus 3 is 5 is 2 is 7 plus 3. Yeah, I can't get another round. I would just be doing... I mean, I'd be doing a ton more spike damage. Oh.
Yeah. But the alternative is to give this dude like one, two, three, four, five. Five times two, ten more attack, which is multiplied by three, so thirty more attack. Yeah, I think that's what I gotta do. Just gotta hope. Gotta pray that the math works out. I have a feeling we're gonna lose, though. Oh! Oh my god. We have not lost. I'm just doing a little victory lap. Using all my spells. But do not use Tiresome Climb. <laughs> or I would lose just now. You can just throw the boss into your pyre and insta lose. Oh, okay. Wow. Well, that was a little close for comfort. I thought for sure we were going to lose there. But we did not. Had a nice, simple win. Revived the Frozen Heart. Cleared Ascension 2. Yep, and got some gold frames. Double the amount of rage, friendly units. Demons get multi-strike one. I think this is actually like the best perk, uh, best artifact. So it's just so valuable. Though credited with building the Hellhorn section of the rail, Gurg wasn't able to complete it without the help from other demons. Some needed more motivation than others. Animus Speed is pretty good. Vine Mother also pretty good. That's a decent spell to your deck or hand every round. Boom, boom, boom. Very good. I've yet to unlock the Milting Revenant, which is my favorite clan. Well, that was it for today. I hope you enjoyed watching it. If you did, you can let me know. Like and comment down below. If not, that's fine as well. Uh, you know, either way. I hope you enjoyed it, though. And I hope I'll be seeing you next time, where we might be playing more Monster Train. Goodbye!